more graphing using calculus or curve sketching using calculus. Uh, this is question f, where we're given f of x equals x e to the x over 1 minus x minus 1. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the zeros. And the zeros come from the numerator. And since either the x cannot equal 0, we know that the zeros must only come from the factor x, so x must equal 0. So I'm just going to put in my coordinate of x is 0, y is 0. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to then look for a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is going to come from the denominator. So the denominator is x minus 1. So my vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals 1. Okay, so I'm going to sketch in here my vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Okay, and we can tell which, way, which direction this graph is going at the asymptote by we can use a limit. And we can say that the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side of f of x is going to be equal to, well, the numerator is going to be equal to positive 1. e to the x is going to be e. So we're just going to put positive in the numerator. And as we approach 1 from the negative side, we're going to end up approaching 0 from the negative side, which means then that it's going to go down in this direction. Okay, so we're going to be heading down at the asymptote from the left-hand side. From the right-hand side, it's going to look a little bit different. And again, these, these limits we don't necessarily have to do because we could probably determine the direction of these asymptotes from the coordinates. But we'll just make sure here. So as I approach 1 from the positive side, I'm going to end up with a positive in the numerator. And in the denominator, I'm going to approach 0. This time, I'm approaching 1 from the positive side. So 1 minus 1 is going to give me a positive 0. And that's going to go to positive infinity. So then I know it's going to be heading up in this direction. So I have my vertical asymptote. I should look for my horizontal asymptote. A horizontal asymptote indicate endpoint behavior. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be as x goes to infinity. Okay, then maybe I'll write this as a limit. The limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x, we're going to end up with this function essentially becomes e to the 1 times e to the x. So we go out to positive infinity. So we know that it's going to head out in the positive direction. It's heading out that way. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity, again, the x over 1 x minus 1 that tends towards 1 and then we end up having the e to the x function e to the negative infinity works out to be 0 okay so again maybe I'll just plug these bits in so this uh, we're going to end up with 1 for the ratio of x over x minus 1 and then becomes e to the negative infinity and that becomes 0 so no we know that on the negative side, there is a horizontal asymptote going there. And by the looks of it, it looks like it's going to approach from the positive direction because it looks like it's got to go up and then it's got to come back down to the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so I've dealt with my, my zeros, my vertical asymptotes, my horizontal asymptotes. I really want to know where the min and max points are, so I'm going to do a derivative. I'm going to look at my derivative. So I'm going to go over here and find the derivative of this function. So f of x is equal to x e to the x over x minus 1. The f prime value, I need to differentiate using product and quotient rules. So I'm going to use my product rule first. Okay, so that's the derivative of the numerator times the denominator. 
and then the rest of this is applying the quotient rule. So it's going to be minus x e to the x times the derivative of the denominator, which is 1, all divided by x minus 1 squared. So I'm going to simplify this expression. I'm going to expand this out. x e to the x plus x squared e to the x minus e to the x minus x e to the x. Okay, so then just double checking that and then minus x e to the x. Okay, there are some like terms in here which I have to simplify. So I'm going to factor out the e to the x first and then I'm going to end up with x squared. The x terms are going to be x minus e to the x minus e to the x, so minus 1x. And then e to the x, this e to the x here generates some minus 1, so there's my quadratic function that I'm going to solve for in the numerator. Okay, so there's my x minus 1 squared. And then I want to know the min and max points of this, so I'm going to set this equal to 0. That means then that I can simplify this because e to the x is not equal to 0. I can just make that quadratic equal to 0. And I'm going to solve that quadratic for x. So x is equal to 1 plus minus square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times a times c, which is negative 1 over 2a, and this simplifies to 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. Okay, so going back to my graph here, I should have an idea where 1 plus root 5 over 2 uh, and 1 minus root 5 over 2 end up. So root 5 over 2, root 5 is approximately 2.25, so I know this is going to be 1 plus 2.25 divided by 2. So we're looking at a value of just about 1.6. I'm going to put that here. This is going to be 1 plus root 5 over 2, and we're going to have a horizontal asymptote there, or sorry, horizontal tangent there. So it looks like that, based on what I have so far, it's a minimum. And then over here, it's going to be 1 minus root 5 over 2. This is going to be approximately 1 minus 2.25 divided by 2 is negative 0.6. Okay, so, the, so we're going to have a, net, a maximum value, it looks like, over here. Okay, and then I have my, my undefined value here, which I should really test on both sides, but you know, we, we don't have to, we can be fairly confident that nothing funny is happening over there, but I'm just going to put that in as well. And that's at 1. Okay, so once I have my zeros, I need to test my slopes. So I'm going to do a test of slopes for f prime value. Somewhere to the left of that, I'm just going to go at negative 1. So when I plug in f prime into this expression here, all I'm really checking for is positivity or negativity. So that's always positive. That's going to be 1 plus 1 minus 1. The denominator is negative. So we're going to end up with a positive slope out here at x equals negative 1. So it's going to go up. Okay, we're going to have slope there. Uh, at 0, f prime at 0. When I plug in 0, I'm going to end up with negative. So we know it's going down in here. Now, I probably should figure out f prime somewhere in between 1 and about 1.6. So if I plug in about 1.5, okay, if I plug that in, now I just have to be a bit careful calculating this, but this is about 2.25 minus 1.5 minus, um, minus 1, so that's going to be negative about 0.25. It remains negative, so we, we don't really have any reason to believe that it's going to change slope across this asymptote. It looks like it's pointing down, and we can see that up on the top side is pointing up, so it's going to be negative slope here negative slope here as well okay so we don't really if we didn't test that we'd be okay because we already kind of see what's happening at the asymptote there's my zero slope 
I'm going to test f prime at 2. When I plug 2 in, I get 2 minus, four, sorry, 2 squared minus 2 minus 1, which is positive 1. And again, the rest is positive, so I know my slope is positive in this region, so it looks like that. So I have all the, what I need here. I could calculate the y coordinates. Now, in the answers, I've calculated y coordinates here for the 1 plus root 5 and 1 minus root 5. But on a test, I would not expect you to calculate the y coordinates for this. Okay, so that's not that's something that I probably would not expect you to do. It is good to have an idea where those points are. Okay, so at this max, somewhere around point six, we're going to have some maximum point up here. And based on the graph, we know that this graph follows the asymptote. It doesn't have zeros. It's got to go up to the max. It's got to come back down through the zero, and it's got to hit that vertical asymptote going down in that direction. We know over here we have some minimum point. The relative, where it is relatively on the y, I'm not too sure. This one could be higher. I'm not exactly positive on that. But we know it goes down to this minimum point. And then from here it comes back up because it's got to go up as the endpoint behavior is going to infinity. So this is what my graph is going to end up looking like. And I've broken it down into these tasks on the left-hand side here, which are just basically things that we've done without calculus. And over here where we're using the derivative to find the min and max points and doing the slope chart to help us see what's going on with the shape of that graph.